Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about four L's. Okay, hold on. If you're coming from different languages, let's say C, C++ or Java, we know one thing, we know for loop separately and we know that we can use else with the help of if, but then we have never talked about for and else together. Can we do that? And the answer is yes. So in Python, we can use for and else together. So to understand that, let's take an example here. So when we talked about for loop, we have taken an example that we want to print all the numbers between 1 to 20 and we don't want to print all the numbers which are divisible by 5. This time we'll do reverse. So let's say I have a list here. So let's take nums. Uh, so let's have some values here. So I will take uh, 12, 15, 18, 21 and let's say 26. So we got this number here, right? So what we want to do here is I want to check if this list has a number which is divisible by 5. So if you have a number which is divisible by 5, you just have to print it. So if you can see we have a number, right? So we have 15 there which is divisible by 5. But how do we check that? So of course if you want to go from start to end, we have to use a loop. And we love for loop here, right? So let's take a for loop, we'll say for and we'll say num in nums. I know that's, that sounds weird, but let's take it. So we have for num in nums. Okay, so we are using a for loop. And then inside this for loop, I just want to check. And how do we check? We have to say if, if num mod five is equal to equal to zero, that means it is divisible by five. Let's give a colon. And here I just want to print a number. It's that simple, right? So we'll simply say print num. So that's the thing, right? Everything is done. So we got a for loop, we got if, and now let's run this code and you can see we got 15. So yes, we in this list, we have a number which is divisible by five. For example, if I remove this 15 and if, if I make it 16, if I make this 26 as 25. So yes, we still have one number which is divisible by five. Let's run this and you can see we got 25. Okay, there's a one problem here. What if you have two numbers? In this case, let's say if I make this one as 20, so we got 20 and 25. In the output, you will get both. We got 20 and we got 25. We don't want that. What we want is we want to print only the first number. So that means, uh, so we, we just have to say we got one number which is divisible by five. So in this case, I will use break. So basically we use break to come out of the loop. So whatever loop you are running, it will just jump out of the loop. That's it. And now if you run this code, you can see we got 20. It is not even checking for 25. In fact, if you have this one as 10, in this case, it will just run only once. It will only go for one iteration. And then it will skip all the remaining number because we are saying break. But we got a twist here. The twist is what if you have numbers here and none of the number is divisible by five. Look at the numbers now. We don't have any number which is divisible by five. And if you run this code, you can see we got the output which is blank. Oh, that's a problem. So what we can do here is we can use a else condition here. So we can say else, if it is not there, you can simply print not found. So what we can say is if you don't have any number which is divisible by five, you can simply print not found. And it should work if you run this code, you can see we got not found, but hold on, we got not found five times. Because what is happening, you know, in every iteration, it is checking for the condition. And this else here is for if, look at the indentation. So this else is for if, and that's why for every iteration, if this if returns false, it will execute the else block. We don't want that. We don't want to execute else every time you have that iteration. We want to execute else only when the entire loop is completed without break. So what we can do is we can just write else for for, not for if. If you can see, this else is for the for loop, not for if, okay? And if you run this code, you can see we got not found only once. So what we are saying is, if you have this loop in which you have a condition, in which you are also saying break, you can also use else because this loop is never breaked. And that's why we can say else. So that's how we can use for else. So this is not something which we use in daily life, but yes, we can use it. Okay, uh, do we have something more here? Example, let's say if I have the first value as 10 now, since we have a number which is 10, it will not print not found, it will print 10. So that, that's how it works. So it's the break is compulsory here. So if you remove break and if you run this code, you can see it will print not found. Uh, so that break is compulsory. So it will work only when you have break. So that's it everyone. That's how you use for and else in Python. So yes, we can use for else. 
So I hope you are enjoying the series. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos. Bye-bye.